prescribing her rehab now. Derek relapsed. You should be dead, man. I had to break every rule. I don't want to be sober anymore. My name is Patrick Ridge. This is my company, Ridge Production. This is my amazing wife, Veronica. I'm sober, my wife's not, and that's okay. At the end of the day, we both really want to help people. This is our life together, unfiltered. Welcome to our reality. No bullshit. Stop, stop thinking about tomorrow. Who are the most influential people in your life? My mother, father, and my brother are. that you love and people in your life like, that we have mm. it's so reciprocal mm. you know we all see each other for what we are and we accept it and you know we make each other want to be better but at least that's how i feel when i'm with every single one of you i don't want to be sober anymore none of my friends are i'll stay sober with you Pat. oh you will that's my girl my sober girl, my sober Not girl. Currently. Do whatever you. The last night of the festival. Do whatever you want to do. She doesn't want to be sober anymore. <laughs> Why do you think I fucking feel? Yeah, I am not a drug She's not sober, and she was doing hallucinogenics, and that was okay with me because she's her own person. But I get that people might think I'm an addict. It is. You know, there there is a crazy line between him being sober and me being respectful, but then also like needing to live. I ate a little bit of mushrooms. Is my smile bigger than when we left the house? What? I ate an edible before I got here. You can't just rip it with the family, so you gotta eat the Eaties. Where'd you get this? America. Uh, Pat, I just wanna tell you that I ate mushrooms. Well, you're supposed to tell me before you do it. I'm going full send. Yeah, I should for sure tell him. I kind of want to make it less of a thing because I feel like when I'm tripping, it's a thing. Why? Because I was the mom that would never leave Dino. We couldn't bring him here because he was going to chase the bunny rabbits. <laughs> so you're crying because of our dogs. That's how much she loves our dogs. Dino, not Rami, because Rami's happy home. I know it's happy here, but he's a killer. People in the AA community or people in 12-step recovery, they, 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 they look at that and they judge that. And, oh, they either they need to be sober or, or you shouldn't be around that. Or everyone has their own opinion. Everyone wants to push their shit on you. But like, I'm healthy, I'm happy, I love my wife. She can do whatever the fuck she wants. You smoke weed every day, am I? You no. Know, you get to use, but you gotta give me something in return later. <laughs> What's what? the winking about? Some good, good head. Look at this little boy over here, though. He's insane. Yes. Oh, my God. Oh, my These three individuals are tripping on mushrooms, and I'm just chilling. Thanks to the spell. I gotta be real honest with you guys. Y'all are melting right now. This weekend is going to be tricky because everyone's gonna be fucking tripping balls on mushrooms and acid, and I'm sober. Just like getting no, sick and tired of people doing drugs all the time. But are you, like, would, would you not agree that you would notice? No, I love actually how you are and you haven't been like out of control, which is fine, but I'm just a little bit like over it. You know what I mean? I don't know what you mean, you're not explaining. What like I'm over like Tim. There's a disconnect, you know, how you can like, oh my God, I love this person, they're my best friend. It's just really that you get high together 
Um, so he feels he doesn't have that con same connection with like some of my friends that come over or even me when I'm high. But Tim has a hard time just being, doing nothing with me sober. I can't even watch a movie with him. What's crazy is he's trying to save people's life, get people sober while he's surrounded by uh, myself and his wife and the closest people around him. We're wild dogs. I'm just wondering if like one of the days you could like, one of the days here you could just stay sober like all day and night. Everyone's tripping and I'm just, I'm a little over it. I'm not saying you have to. <laughs> No, we, we, we can talk like about it. <laughs> we, we can talk about it tomorrow. There isn't a point in being sober with him because when we're at a, what is the word people use? Um, a function, <laughs> like that, of that sort. It's like he's talking to everyone else. So it's not like we're even bonding. I'm sober with you. Oh, you will. Uh, I see some of my friends. I can get high with their husbands or go on like little shroom explorations and. Um, I, I do, I am envious of that time, but I feel like I'm more grateful to have a sober husband. All right, so the festival is over. I'll tell you one thing, I do not want to be them right now. I'm having to clean up that fucking mess in that house. It was a nice getaway, and we're driving her to rehab now. Be honest with you, I was kind of worried just because you hadn't called in a while and I don't know what's going on at the house. Derek is our friend. He's a friend of the family. Derek is my sponsee and he's in rehab now. Whatever they think you need to do is whatever you're gonna need to do. I know it's a hard pill to swallow, but you should just, you should be dead, man. So yeah, my friend Derek's been shooting heroin and coke for a while now and he's finally ready to go to rehab. I'm on my way to pick him up. <clears throat> We're gonna drive him to the airport and take him to Kentucky to a place called Liberty House where he'll hopefully be there for a year. Saving lives, y'all. Convinced yeah. that was gonna happen. And like- Yeah, I do remember that. Yeah, and, and here you are taking Kratom of all things while in sober living. You know what I mean? Uh, it's like. So that's just, Bro, how, I just want you to under, like, I want you to try to see different perspectives of how insane our brains are sometimes, you know? Yeah. And that's why we have yeah. each other. That's why we have each other. We, we rely on each other. I have nine years of sobriety. I got sober October 26, uh, 2010. I've been sober since. Look, all you gotta do is get through tonight. I mean, you just gotta stop thinking about the future and the past. You just have to be in the moment you're in. Every moment has to be the moment. I have a meeting that I'm about to do at my house. There's like 10 people outside waiting for me. I'm really glad you called and uh, we'll talk tomorrow, bro. Good for you, we're fucking, right. this is incredible. We're so stoked for you. You are. I'm one of your guys' friends. Oh, you are? Am I not? I don't know. Just did a meeting at my house. It was really cool. We, we, we had an AA meeting out here. Um, <sighs> And then um, we have uh, Danielle in here, which is my dear friend, who's uh, had 11 years and now she has 44 days. I got sober in 08 for the last time, but I got sober, I tried getting sober prior. I went to Mississippi and I learned, like, I went through a 12-step program, but I went through a Scientology program in 06 called Narconon. We live in a world gripped by an epidemic of drug abuse and addiction. Not only do drugs kill tens of thousands each year, Drug-related crimes plague every community. That's why Scientologists the world over actively support and work with the drug rehabilitation and prevention programs of Narconon. One time I was able to escape was because I lied and I said that I had wisdom teeth growing in and I was in an excruciating amount of pain, so they flew me back to LA to get my teeth taken out. So I got my wisdom teeth taken out for no reason. She brought her friend, Johnny Crump, Johnny Crump who's um, Two days. Who's an actor, writer, uh, idiot savant from a dairy farm living on a bunk bed in the hood. No, okay. Just call it what it is. Sleep perchance to dream, I there's the rub from that sleep of death, what dreams may come when we've shuffled off this mortal coil must. And so then I started creating this theory in my head that, like, well, if I'm gonna be masturbating in a porta potty shooting crystal meth anyway, 
Why go back to AA? Thy wounds now do I prophesy, which like dumb mouths to open their ruby lips to make the voice and utterance of my tongue. Sent you a nude video? Yeah, it's like jacking off. From hell shall from these confines with a monarch's voice cry heaven! That motherfucker brought alcohol into the house and fucked one of the clients. I don't understand. It's about battle and shit. What you're you know, saying. I speak like that. Right. Nobody gets it, but it's dope. I just want to like get us together and talk about like what this is really gonna look like so I could put together like a budget like a real budget mm -hmm. and makes and see if it makes sense for us to do yeah. you know because we're not gonna it's a lot of work you know and Jason right. was telling me he's like dude he's like I know the guy who started promises and this and then he's like really connected he's like it, it's a lot of work and there's not a lot of profit right. and so it's something that we want to make sure we want to do and if it becomes something where it's like okay, we have this like niche thing, then we can like expand. Agora Hills is the town we grew up in and we watched people, Tom Duong, dear friend of mine, died of overdose. Jeremy Elson. Jeremy Elson, Eric Rosenstein, 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 the lead singer Pope Choki, Ryan Mazzola. People have hung themselves. Shot themselves. Because people are trying to escape their feelings. Are they coming too soon? Cup between red and the green and you. I'm stuck in the I'm sober now. I need to fucking help people because that's why I'm sober again. My mission in life is to help other addicts get and stay sober. I know how to get sober. I've gotten sober and I think transmitting the message is the right thing to do. And learning to lose is like accepting failure, accepting when things don't go your way. And I feel like I'm pretty fortunate to live, like my, my parents get me pretty sheltered, they're still married, and I've had overall um, pretty good life. And so sometimes I am in fear of like, you know, tragedies that can happen. Maybe that's partly why I'm afraid to have a child. The idea of a house, like what it's gonna look like, you walk in, there's like surfboards on the wall and like flat screens, and then like there's cool plants. I met Pat about eight years ago, right before I had a baby. Um, at a primetime meeting and he came up to me and said, hey, will you sponsor me? And I was like, you want me to sponsor you? Because, you know, he looks like one of the cool guys. I said, sure, call me every day. And he actually called and he kept calling and kept calling. And I'm like, oh shit, this guy's calling again. But I certainly want to help people if I can. You know, I'm wounded and I know what suffering's like and I know there is a way out and I know how hard it is. And so if I can uh, be a beacon on the hill of sorts, if you want to think biblical about it, or a light in the darkness, I would very much like that. I'm Woodstock. I reached out to Pat on uh, Instagram because I've been uh, seeing his story, learning to lose and um, his relationship with his wife online and everything, their dynamic, and I hit him up like, yo dude, I see that you're driven, you're motivated, you're focused, and I would love to work with you one day. I'm trying to figure out what's the best way for him to do this. I would hold it like this, and you could just walk like this next to us. Okay. You know what I mean? Or, or, or even over here, maybe. Right? It doesn't need to be perfect. Okay. You know what I mean? As long as you're picking up audio. I'm like a nice little walk after a... Uh, Filming. Can, I'll cue you. Okay. It'll be wide lens, so it'll get all. Oh yeah. You don't have to film anymore. Okay. When I do an interview, you want to have, like, I would say, mid, which is like chest to head, right there, one shot, and then a tight. So this camera, obviously, what you're doing over here was tight. What matters is the background, and what matters is the background is interesting, but not distracting. This is natural light. I want to use this to my advantage. You need to sit at least five feet from a background. And I always use my hand because that's skin tone. And I look at the skin and I go, okay, that looks that looks good. It's a vibe. It's a vibe. Yeah. Footage isn't gonna live on the computer. What we're doing is we're putting a pro we're putting all this footage into one project on Final Cut. Then we're gonna export it and immediately put that export on a Vimeo so someone else can edit it. So we're just like moving footage. Right. Make sense? Yes. And as soon as that's done, format the cards. Boom. Pretty easy. Okay. Right? Yeah. I just like the way that sounds on camera. Where were you? At the beach with DDA and Brad. Veronica, we need to get an interview. Okay, well, let me. Right oh. now. No. Oh, look at that! Look at that new, uh, look at that new, uh, the new thing. He goes, come here. He goes, 
<laughs> we did a new thing. What do you want? What are you trying to do? You trying to uh, antagonize your little brother? Oh, you're so cute. I love you so much. That's right. My brother is like... My brother and my dad are hot-headed assholes. What's going on right now? Just money. People want to say money doesn't matter, but it does. I need you to understand like what my brother and my dad said to, to, to Larry. Larry is the owner of Liberty House and he saves lives. He saved Troy's life, my life, Chris's life, uh, Robert's life, Charlie's life, Michaela's. Just like, it's incredible. My brother goes, Derek relapsed under your supervision. Larry goes, we need payment today or we'll discharge and bill you for the last two weeks. What do you want to do? My brother goes, so no answer for that? My dad wrote, I'm out of this conversation. Whoever this guy is in Kentucky is completely unreasonable. How can you do business with this guy that calls the shots no matter how unreasonable he is, no matter how much makes sense it sounds. See, like it's his way or no way. You can't control your house. It seems like that's a house problem, not a guest problem. Larry goes, I'm not unreasonable. I explained and have always worked with Pat. Derek's relapse is on him, not me. What's going through your mind right now? Just like rage, anger towards my dad and my brother, you know? And I'm like trying to like contain it. But it's like really, really hard. Like they wreck, they're wrecking like what I'm trying to do because of their egos. I can't, I can't do this when you guys are like working against me, you know? Well, the guy, the guy has no right to pull up in the street and plus we said fuck you and I'll pay him. You were in charge of paying the three grand, made a deal last night, you didn't do it, so fix it. Fix the problem. Did your dad help you get sober? Yeah. How? Throwing money at me. What about like involvement in your recovery? So why do you expect him to do that to Derek? Wow. <laughs> dad, listen to me, okay? Listen to me, carefully. Don't worry about Derek. I got it. I know how to pay them, I'm going to pay them, okay? Everything's fine, don't worry about it, okay? Right? This is why kids can't get sober, because the family and the dysfunctional people around them don't want to get on board, because dysfunctionality breeds dysfunctionality. Dad, you're gonna see this one day, and you're gonna know how fucking angry I really am, and you're gonna be forced to listen. So you're telling me you're gonna be taking mushrooms for the next 30 days. So you found out who the girl was? I don't want to add drama like you do. I haven't been drinking. I'm not even in you're the really brain. You're fucking pissing me off right now, you know that? So many other women are going through the same struggle you are. You just wanna have what? A healthy relationship with it, and what I'm like.